si vous suivez. Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, where are we? Om gate gate para gate para som gate bodhisoha. Gate gate para gate para som gate bodhisoha. Om gate gate para gate para som gate bodhisattva. I and all surrounding <coughs> sentient beings take refuge in the Buddha, take refuge in the Dharma, take refuge in the Sangha. We prostrate to the great mother Prajnaparamita surrounded by her children, the assemblies of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions. In dependence on my prostrations to all of you, may these words of truth be actualized. Mm -hmm. In the past, the Deva King Indra dispelled the evil Maras by reflecting on the profound meaning of the wisdom gone beyond and reciting the profound words in recitation. In that same way, I also reflect on the profound meaning of the pr great mother Prajnaparamita and recite the profound words in daily recitation. Mm -hmm. Where is it? <coughs> oh, <laughs> From the holy supreme realm of Kachara, you who possess powers of clairvoyance and magical emanation, look after practitioners like a mother looks after her children. To the host of Dakinis of the three abodes, I prostrate. Aka Samara Cha Sara Samara Yape Aka Samara Cha Sara Samara Yape Tatagata Tayata Gate Gate Paragate Parasungate Bodhiso. By the teachings of the noble, three noble, rare, sublime ones possessing the power of truth, may hindrances be averted, may they be eliminated, may they be pacified, may all enemies and negative forces opposed to Dharma, Shantim Krusoha. May the host of 80,000 obstacles be pacified. May we be free from harmful conditions to Dharma. May all excellences be in accord with the Dharma, and may there be auspiciousness and perfect happiness mm -hmm. here right now. Yeah. <clears throat> Can't say 
Sanji, Namuhai <laughs> Uh, first of all, Rinpoche says he would like to welcome all of you and say Tashdile, mm. greet you with the Tibetan greeting of Tashdile. <coughs> um, and he's very uh, happy to have the opportunity once again to be here, um, <coughs> to be in Tushita, to teach here. And the main disciples, the main students today uh, is a Vietnam group, a group from Vietnam. Um, and then there are also other people who've come together here, but Rinpoche would like to also uh, thank the organizers, uh, those who usually live here, who organize this event for making this possible. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Ni <laughs> Pinto <laughs> for today, the topic Rinpoche will speak on is the eight verses of mind training. However, Rinpoche would also like to give you a short introduction to Buddhism. Uh, well, first of all, for those who've never received an introduction on that particular topic, but also those who wonder <coughs> what Buddhism is all about, for those people like Rinpoche would like to uh, say a few words about that. Um, and also, it may be helpful for you in terms of your own daily practice. So you may wonder, what is it I need to do on a daily basis? What is it that helps me when I live in society, when I live with other people? Uh, what could be helpful? And live with other, I mean, live in society, live not on my own, but with others. So for that purpose, Rinpoche will give like a short introduction on Buddhism. And anyway, Rinpoche says, this is the 21st century. So the teachings need to be uh, adapted to this uh, time and age, and that's why Rinpoche will give the following teachings. Mm. <laughs> 
Chuche kinda mijiki ni parula, the cheva karan to grace. Tindegi soundi, Nazu, the swing the sena di, yon si wichi, the yon de wichi chagoros. Now, when it comes to Buddhism, or as it's also called the Dharma, the teachings, um, now what is the Dharma? The question arises what is the Dharma? And for someone who practices the Dharma, what are the advantages for doing so? What are the disadvantages for not practicing the Dharma? And what is the difference between someone who practices the Dharma and someone who doesn't? So these are all uh, questions that need to be addressed. Dingala, <coughs> now with regard to the question, what is Dharma? Remember she says there are two answers that can be given to what is Dharma. So in general, Dharma in Tibetan, I mean the word in Tibetan or the Sanskrit word, has the meaning of Dharma in general, any kind of religion, any kind of spiritual system. And then, of course, there's Buddha Dharma. And Rinpoche says, well, in general, when we talk about any kind of spiritual system, any religion, one very important aspect is faith, having faith, having faith in God and so forth. So in that sense, when we think of religion, we think of faith. Now, in particular, with regard to the Buddha Dharma, with regard to Buddhism, there is faith, faith in what is called Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, having faith in these three objects. However, faith is not enough. You need more than faith. So it would not be sufficient to describe the Dharma only on the basis, the Buddha Dharma, on the basis of faith. The now, what we're going to talk about today is not Dharma in general, but the Buddha Dharma. And what do we need on top of faith? We need wisdom. Uh, wisdom, either you can talk about wisdom, or f wisdom in connection with faith, so that's one way, or wisdom conjoined with faith, or faith conjoined with wisdom. But what else? Uh, is, is, defines the Dharma, well, the Dharma refers to something that, or a system that tames the mind. So to tame one's own mind, to tame an, uh, our mind, to subdue our own mind, that can also be a definition, that's also a way to describe what is called Dharma, or Buddha Dharma. Lola, mm. uh, Debati Sachimbu Zigire. Redi Debati Chegures in Debati Duja Tatu Dan Ani Debati Kuran Tuja Tatu Sunre Duja Tatu Sunich Duja Tatu Ro the Debachi but did sang in Tigris in Taran Shasha Joro D in Tigo Maris Deba Kuran Yang Yinachi Oris Chashi 
Kare che ni teba che gu ure segi. Di jau lu ki ju sin. Dan do shinda. Yue gu ure sti yore is. Nos. Therefore from a Buddhist point of view. Faith is precious. Faith is important. Faith is, is um, precious. And it's important to generate a type of faith. Uh, that is said to be one of the ultimate goals. To have, an, to have this faith, to have this belief. Uh, but that's not enough. Because the question that arises is, why should we have faith? So it needs to be explained why we should have faith. Mm. Chu now, what is it we have faith in when we talk about faith in Buddhism? Well, we have faith in, or we try to develop faith in Buddha, <coughs> Dharma, and Sangha. Now, Buddha, why to have faith in the Buddha? Well, simply because the Buddha teaches the path. The Buddha uh, teaches or taught the path in the sense that he taught us that the root cause for all our suffering, for all our dissatisfactory experiences, is holding on to uh, true existence, which does not accord with reality. And the Buddha showed us the path to overcome that wrong view, which is the root of all our problems, that misperception of reality. And then there's the Dharma, which refers to the teachings or to the method to overcoming this dissatisfactory situation we find ourselves in, to overcoming our problems, our sufferings, and so forth. So it's seen as the method, kind of the path that helps us to overcome unwanted experiences. <coughs> and then, of course, you also have the Sangha, which refers to the practitioner who, practitioners who put this into practice. And so, again, it makes sense that we trust them, we, we have faith in them. Therefore, when we talk about faith in Buddhism, in particular when it comes to the Buddha, so what did the Buddha do? The Buddha taught us the means and methods to overcoming problems, sufferings, and their causes by way of teaching us what are called the Four Noble Truths. Mm. <coughs> Uh Sukin, Tinde 
Now, with regard to having faith, well, that, of course, is one aspect of Buddhism. But likewise, as mentioned earlier, uh, another aspect is to tame our own mind, which uh, takes us to the second meaning of the word dharma, or the second aspect that it refers to, because the word dharma also means to change or to transform. So to tame our mind by way of transforming our own mind. What is it we try to transform? Our own mind. By way of understanding the ultimate nature of phenomena. How do I really exist? How do I exist? How do phenomena exist? So uh, having a wrong perception of the self and holding on to it is the cause for our self-centeredness which gives rise to all our problems. And that is counteracted by uh, a mind that understands how the self really exists and by a mind that cherishes others and not just oneself. So we talk about, for instance, the mind of enlightenment, the wish to become enlightened, um, what's called bodhicitta. And we also talk about a wisdom, understanding how phenomena really exist, how the self really exists, or so the wisdom realizing, empty, realizing selflessness. With these two minds, they can really change our mind. If we generate these minds in our own continuum, then we can transform ourselves. We can transform our mental continuum. And so all misery in this world comes from not understanding the self and so forth, from self-centeredness. And that's what we're trying to overcome. And we can overcome uh, our misery, our problems, etc., by way of understanding how the self really exists, realizing selflessness, and by generating a mind that cherishes others. This is the main aspect. These are the paths that lead us to the transformation of our own mind. These are the main methods. And therefore, when we talk about the Dharma, Buddha Dharma, it's about transforming our mind. It's about taming our mind by transforming our mind. And what are the methods to doing so? Well, the methods are understanding selflessness and becoming familiar, familiarizing ourselves with cherishing others. So it's all about that, about generating these states of mind, cultivating these states of mind, wisdom, understanding, selflessness, and the mind that cherishes others, generating them in our own continuum and familiarizing with them. That is what the Dharma is all about. Sin 
Therefore, when we talk about the actual nature of Dharma in general, so which includes other spiritual systems, it is faith. But more, uh, more specifically, when we talk about the Buddha Dharma, about Buddhism, well, faith, as we've already heard, is not enough. It is faith combined with the methods to transforming our own mind. So that is what is Buddha Dharma, what is the, the nature, the entity, if you like, or the definition of the Buddha Dharma. And then why would we practice this? What is the reason for practicing the Dharma? Why should we practice Buddhism? Why is it helpful? Well, because we don't want to suffer. We don't want to experience dissatisfactory, unwanted states. And instead, we want to be satisfied. We want to be happy. Therefore, what is important to understand is that happiness doesn't really come from the outside. It mainly comes from the inside. And it's important to avoid the causes that create problems, create unwanted experiences, and to cultivate the causes that lead to happiness, to contentment. Therefore, having understood that it doesn't come from the outside, we need to change our mind. And by transforming our mind, we can reduce our problems. We can reduce our problems by avoiding the causes that create problems and so forth. And that is what everyone understands, actually. I mean, all religious systems have a basic understanding of the fact that we want to be happy, we don't want to suffer. Hmm. The, uh, deal it. Uh, after a translator, after a translator. I just need a moment for the translation, the Vietnamese translation. Yeah.
Mm. Uh, after uh, translator, I. Oh. Oh. No, 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 no. That. Uh. 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 Gangela Donici, Tana Maojida, Tinezi Gugoris, Tinezi Manjona, Chuchi Vikiming Keo Maris. So, therefore, talking about the advantages of practicing the Dharma, which refers likewise to the reason why would you practice this? Well, the advantage is that as a result of Dharma practice, we'll feel happier. And we're more resilient, we become more resilient. In the face of problems, we're able to face them more effectively and become more resilient. Uh but a big question that arises as a result of that explanation is, well, if we want to be happy and we want to avoid problems, our mind transforming, so transforming our mind, if that is really the cause of finding more happiness and avoiding problems, uh, in particular, avoiding the causes of these problems, such as afflictive emotions, as they're called, the misperception of reality, holding on to a self that actually doesn't exist, um, avoiding self-centeredness, and instead generating a mind understanding how the self really exists. How does that lead to happiness? That's the big question. How does that actually benefit us? <coughs> ah. Together? Okay. Okay. Uh Ro, the candidate Lodigala, Pena, Mitsin di Nangola, Lula tembe tungeta, Sin la tembe tungeta sama, Sindigi, Lucini la tin dioro. Therefore, for instance, well, if we don't want to suffer, we don't want to experience problems and so forth, well, from a Buddhist point of view, it is said that if we overcome the view that wrongly holds on to a self that doesn't exist, if we overcome self-centeredness, then we can overcome our problems, these unwanted experiences. But how are those connected? How is suffering connected to this misperception of reality and self-centeredness? So, from a Buddhist point of view, all our problems come from the misperception of the I, of not perceiving how the I actually exists, how the self really exists. So, when we talk about problems, Problems refer to physical and mental problems, with physical problems coming from the body and mental problems coming from the mind. Hmm. Uh, Lula, neighbor to Gukuyu, twenty two thirty, 
gure sungur ma dia di go mares dunge giranshin re si go mar di sigo mar das kuno thi jum tu now in this very life uh, what we need what we want is feeling well physically and mentally experiencing mental and physical well-being that's what we want and this is something from a Buddhist point of view, well, that is considered to be important. We need that. We need to experience physical and mental well-being. No one denies that. Even though from a Buddhist point of view, it is said that our nature, our, our existence is in the nature of suffering. But no one is saying that it's not important to be well physically and mentally. And especially talking about uh, celestial and human existence, uh, it is actually, as human beings, we deserve, we we. It's, it's important for us to have a certain degree of well-being. Therefore, Buddhism supports this need for happiness, for contentment. Mm. Mm. Tandegi Lucin D. Tru Tsunjela, Tru Tsarwe Jela, Lucin Nila Tembe, Bena, Chiu Dunge, Gave Dunge, Nayu Dunge, Chiu Dunge, Ro, Tindegi, Chiganachi Dunge, Jisro, then Jisro Shuji, Dunge Nalu, Shiza Sandan, Tindegi, Dunge, the Kanga Tijeti, Do the Meva Mendova, Ro. Katsuzi Dilla Mundova Yuva in the Ping Mare, Mundu Sintu Rangi Nanki, the Yungri, the Turk Mugu, Turk Katsumu Katsuji Yuva in the Tidal Tata Yomare, Lundi Truba Zanzi, Lundia Dos Ro Chisu Kamani, those remedy with Chisu Chisu and Niman Niman in Down Down in Lundu, Sigan Reti, Suji Dutu Yomaro. Shazan. Lundi truths have a jilla, lula tembe gang at Saman Kuchiungris. Ludi, Lundi, you ever change time war. Yes. Now, what can we do to experience uh, physical and mental well being? Well, first of all, the moment this body, this mind came into existence, so in particular when it comes to this body, there are certain problems we will experience. There is the pain or the suffering of birth. And then, of course, there are the problems of, or the sufferings of um, sickness, of becoming old, and of death. So those are sufferings that we experience because we have this present body. And there's nothing we can do about it. We may not like them. Or we may not like to get sick. We may not like, like to get old and so forth. But there's nothing we can do. We may try as much as we can, but as long as we have this present body, we will have to undergo these problems, getting sick and so forth. So Ruchi stressed this a lot. There's really nothing we can do. So having, even if we try over a long time not to grow old, not to get sick and so forth, there's very little we can do. Um, so that's something important to understand with regard to the nature of this body that we have right now. Mm. Naranzola, John Simbatan, Ron John Simbatan, John Jui, Gange, Yonsu Zoba, Titanji, Cindy Lucini, Jo, Jobe, Gage Dambu Tine, Cindy, Cindy Lucini Bu, D, Guca du Zu, and the Tine, Cindy Gange Titanji, Yoank and Gutsu Yores. She is. Mitsigi Kanga Yonzugi Shimasundati, Tandeng Aransu Lucini Tirista. In short, in this very life uh, we live right now, well, all our many different problems, all our troubles, our pain, and so forth, they come from this body and this mind. The moment our present body, our present mind came into existence, from the very first moment of this body and this mind, we experience problems, we experience difficulties. Therefore, we can say our body and our mind are the foundation for all our trouble. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's the 
ani langringi piche pen ji dani chimbi langring ji bun ringi kos koye dunge son yoro tisu to slo da hakukure so think about this you should reflect on this and see whether this makes sense to you and rimbachi recommends you to read a particular text by a master called lama tsongkhapa he composed a text that is called the middling treatise on the stages of the path to enlightenment and that consists of three sections so you should read the section on the practices that are common to a person of middling spiritual aspiration and when you read those then it becomes clearer it talks a lot about our dissatisfactory nature the 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 nature of suffering and so forth and what rimuchi has just said will become clearer if you read this ta din di gala Mm Sindigi Shube Ninsan Jayu, Kiji Tambu Tine, Kiji Tambu Tijin Chene, Cindy Lucini, Tin the Temen George Hyatt and Goodson, Cindy Lucini Tine, T. Kiji Nibane, and Betruan Word. Tuba Reda. So, where does this body and this mind, where do our body and mind come from? That's the question. Now, from a Buddhist point of view, uh, we talk about the mind. Where does the mind come from, a festival? Well, the mind comes from a previous existence, from the continuum of the mind uh, has existed in a previous life. Now, Rinpoche says, well, he's not going to go into now rebirth. That has to be addressed, of course, as well. Um, however, without mixing them all together, he said, let's just leave it at that for now and understand that the mind that we have in this life is the continuum from an earlier mind that we had in a previous existence. Now, where did our body come from? Where does our body come from? Well, the explanation from a Buddhist point of view is that your mind has existed even before it existed in its present body, in your present body. And then how did your body come into existence? Well, at the time of conception. When your mother's ovum, your father's sperm came together, these two came together in one cell, and when then this process of cell division and so forth started, so the moment these two came together with the sperm of the father and the ovum of the mother, that's the moment of conception, and that's when your consciousness entered that cell. And that was the moment of your mind and body coming together. That was your first moment of mind in this life and first moment of body in this life. That's the Buddhist explanation. Hmm. That the Dia Yes. 
So why was your consciousness, why did it connect with this particular ovum and sperm, with this fertilized ovum? Why? Well, from a Buddhist point of view, it's because of desire. It's our own desire. It's the desire in your own mind that is responsible for this connection between the mind and the body. So from a Buddhist point of view, it's not God who kind of inserted our mind into uh, this fertilized uh, ovum, this fertilized egg of our mother. And it's not that the wind just randomly kind of carried our mind and just as the wind carries leaves here and there that suddenly our mind was kind of thrown into that ovum. No, that's not how it happened. It was actually our own mind. It was desire. It was uh, what's called grasping in Tibet, not clinging. So these states of mind are responsible uh, for our mind and our body connecting. That thing you think on the Nancy, my in yet to show us Lanry, Tio Limberty, the Shaggy Wonky, Tio Limberty, Garrosi, which I worries. That Dicka do dealer and no more be on Tio Limber Sand Massey, no more but on Legi Wonky Tio Lin Slug War. Dean Dingle, the Shaggy Wonky Genius to show the ready, the Shad Zangi. Gene, Zangi, so shoot to eighty, your bestna, young mare, Ducha Zang in the Tame, Gene Yabushada in Zunduro. The Giolia di, Gene Sundriat in Duchaki Wangredi, Gene the Sangi Udo, Tundu, me, me Nalo Laji Zitua, Zimao, Jordan, and Yupon, Gene the Sangi Udo, and the Ombud Junjin Gine, the Ombud Junjin Yang Tindaki Gine Nalola, a young dea, Damda Yungudo. That in the genius zangiti, less zangiki jis chigores. And so, Jebu zangi, the juzangi, shegurmadu, Jebu zangi, yoedi, eh, ku, kariwangi, yungu, you be changing the guor, that you change the guor, that the juzangi, toni matu shemel, that the less zangi ton shegor season, genius zangi chebati, less zangi yungores, genius and zueti, the shaggy one can zun to worris, the indigala, geoliadi, led a no movie on gris, chasing sungu or rest. This sound is not a Yes. Now, therefore, when we talk about conception, or to put it in different words, for our mind to connect with uh, a body in this previous and in, in this present life, well, when we talk about that, what are the causes that give rise to that? Well, we've heard already. One is desire, desire, clinging, and these are called uh, f these this, these types of mind are called afflictive emotions. So they are responsible, but that's not the only aspect. Of course, our desire, our attachment, that is responsible for being reborn. But we are born in many different states. Everyone has a different situation. There are different states of existence with more problems, with less problems. So. If it was only desire, well, it, doesn't, it wouldn't account for the differences between us. The other aspect we need is what is called karma, or to put it into, in, in, into English terms, different volitional actions. Different volitional actions. They are responsible. So they're positive, uh, virtuous, act, sorry, positive volitional actions and then negative ones. And so in combination with afflictive emotions, these volitional actions we have accumulated in the past, they are then responsible for what kind of existence we are reborn, where we are reborn, whether as a human being, as an animal and so forth, or whether we are poor, rich, have opportunities or not. So this whole combination of our whole existence is the result not just of afflictive emotions such as desire, but also the different volitional actions that we have performed, that we have done in the past. Jewelingadi, <coughs> Tony and 
so therefore the reason we were born into this existence is twofold afflictions and volitional actions or karma so afflictions are responsible for the fact that we are reborn desire uh, is responsible for us being coming into existence into this existence we experience right now and then the differences have to do with our different actions in the past, the different experiences we have. But now, what is desire? What is desire? Desire, Rinpoche explains, is a state of mind that exaggerates the positive qualities of the object of desire. So when we have desire, we perceive an object and totally exaggerate the positive qualities that we are attracted to. And our mind, what it does is, well, it, 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 get atta it gets attached to it. it. It cannot let go of that object. And it perceives the object as if it had some self-sufficient existence, as if it were permanent, as if it were very concrete, a very concrete, desirable object. And then, because of seeing this object as very concrete, as if you could point exactly at the object, and that's what it is, that's the essence, seeing it as totally positive, then desire arises. And that desire is sometimes compared to having a white piece of paper and pouring some oil on that paper. So trying to separate the oil, the oil from the paper is like trying to remove the attachment from the object. It kind of gets glued to that object. And where does that come from? Where does that desire come from? It comes from our misperception of reality, of not perceiving the self in the way it actually exists, or other phenomena for that matter. So holding on to an unrealistic self, that is the root cause of desire. Mm. <laughs> Uh Dwecha So when we hear that desire is the result of that misperception of how the eye actually exists, that is not that easy easy to understand. I mean, initially, it's difficult for us to comprehend this 100%, uh, to be totally convinced. But if you think about it, I mean, to just give you a sense of this, and if you think about it, there is, the, the, you will get a, a certain understanding of that. It's not that difficult. For instance, Rinpoche says, well, what well, he's trying to establish here now, he's saying, well, he stresses again. So desire comes from misperceiving the self, or how it exists. Now think about a mind of desire. And this is something you should analyze based on your own experience. Think back at a time when there was a desire for something, when you really wanted something. The 
there was a mind thinking I that was involved. I want this. I need this. I think this is good. Right? So, for example, so she says, for instance, there's this feeling, I think it's nice. It will help me. It will help my family. It will help my friends. It will help my country. And mostly, it will benefit me. So the I, a sense of an I, is always involved. And because of this, I need this, I want this, or my such and such need this, wants this, because of this, then the mind becomes attached. The mind desires this object. So we perceive it. I, the, the, it's, it's not like, or Rumshi says, it's not like another person considers to, this to be attractive and wonderful and I get attached. It doesn't work that way. It's not like because someone else considers this object important or beautiful or whatever. No, it's because it's the I that perceives it that way that we generate attachment. So it becomes pretty obvious that the I is involved in our attachment, our desire arising. Uh, Subula paint to do not a mandrios in it, not any mandrios in us. Now won't have been looted the paca, looted pa uni. La bala paint to do, Nandiosachi do. Subula paint to do any Nigel and Josachi do say so much. Subula paint to what you sent here. La bala paint to what you sent here. Any Trugula pimba you sent here. Dijena Trugusula pimba in and Josachi or Queer Trugu Trugore, near Trugu Trugore. Ni lava lava, qui lava lava, lava la pemba dan, lava la, and never. Tinder you sent Jenny, Tinder Sheila Shane, do you have a country me with the savory? She said, Ya sent the carriers, not saying, not saying, he sounded in two words. I can't draw. Pena Michi, Juba Shunrida, Juba Shudigala, Shusa Munia Kawashu Wari, Gulushu Wara. They decode to do. Nala Shudu, Yaman and Yen Gulu Shudu, say Nasa, you loot the legroom of Kundu Jimari, Gulu Shudu, Nalon Langu, Sani, Gulu Shubi, you send the Jenny Kundu and Jisaragmaris. She said, Not say you looted and take wood at the Kinsado. Yes. So therefore, when desire arises, it arises because there's a sense this is good, this helps me, this benefits me. The I is always involved. This is good for me. This benefits me. I consider this to be beautiful. I need this. So that is the root, this thought of I, me, and mine. So when we just think of the body, taking the body as an example, actually, if we think of our body without connecting it to the I, so think of your body, but not think it's my body, this is my body, this body belongs to me, without thinking that, just thinking arm, body, hand, belly, there's no desire. It's just an arm. It's just a belly. It's just a body, right? And there's no desire, just as there's no desire for someone else's belly, arm, hand, and so forth. It's just, it's, they're all the same. This is an arm, and there's an arm over there. This is a belly, and there's another person's belly. So only when there's a sense, my body, when the I gets involved, then desire arises. So similarly, when it comes to anger, right? If someone hits me over the head, as long as it's just a head, what do I care? It's just a head. Someone else get hit, gets hit over the head, it's not my head, I don't get angry. But the moment I combine, I bring together body and my body, the situation is different. Therefore, that shows I and my and mine, I, me and mine, sorry, I, me and mine, they need to be involved. 
for us to have desire, for us to have anger. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so Rumbishi says, actually, so much more needs to be explained. Um, but there's not enough time. So if you're interested in the future, you should analyze this further, learn more about this. I mean, so much more needs to be said about that, Rumbishi said. Uh, so in general we say the mind that thinks I gives rise to Desire gives rise to anger. But not every mind that thinks I gives rise to those. Which shows there are two types of mind. There's, there are two types of mind, both thinking I, two types. One gives rise to attachment and anger and so forth. And another one doesn't. Two types. Do you know? ตันเดชะติงาวุนหันเบลุจิเลจีเกวินติกันละงาวุนหันเบลุติกินญมุตเชนทันเจกิจาวเชติกันละงาวุนหันเบลุยเอ่อเซนตังกิยุรอเอ
Therefore, when we say all our problems, all our suffering comes from misperceiving the self, not understanding how the self really exists, that is the root. That's the, the root of all our problems. This is what is meant here when it says in the scriptures. So we're saying that, first of all, our problems, all our problems and difficulties, as Rinpoche explained earlier, come from our body and our mind. Our body and our mind were created by the fact that we were born in this life, in this existence. And we were born in this existence in dependence on uh, desire and volitional actions, karma. And these in turn have their root cause in the misperception of the I. So when we look at these causes, each one of them, the end result being suffering, well, the root of all this is the misperception of the I. That's the root of it. Mm-hmm. Well, now the question that arises is, is only that misperception of the, of the eye, is that, is that the only thing that is responsible for our suffering? And the answer is no. That misperception of our own self is assisted by what is called self-centeredness. Self-centeredness, uh, selfishness or, or being selfish or self-centered, well, this type of mind assists our misperception. Mm. So what is the self-centeredness? Well, self-centeredness is a type of mind that no matter what we do, the eye is in the center. We are in the center of everything. So most of the activities, most of the activities we do, most of what we do, there's a sense, this will benefit me. Or it will benefit that which is mine, my friend, my country, my family, and so forth. So most of our actions are influenced by self-centeredness, by this mind that puts ourselves into the center of everything, being the most important aspect. When we give to others, for instance, and Rinpoche says, not in all cases self-centeredness is involved. In some cases, we very selflessly give to another person. That is possible. But many times, we give to someone, and then the self-centeredness kind of influences our actions. Oh, if I give this now, I'll have some benefit. Almost like a, some kind of sales deal. You know, you give something, you get something back kind of idea. So in that way, Rinpoche says that self-centeredness is another aspect that is very much involved or very much a cause of all our trouble. Mm-hmm. 
ton yo mari karjun sho yo sla du susu dije dan susu la guba tsama sinjin shingi tsane tsu yongu yo ba dan sinjin shindi susu dije ji ju yo na me na zo di yin ba di ku ton yo mari ta ku so what is the problem with self centeredness Uh, why is it the root cause, and it is described as another root cause of all our trouble? Why does it give rise to so many problems? And the reason is that it it fails to understand that all our well-being comes in dependence on other sentient beings. All our happiness comes in dependence on other sentient beings. It fails to recognize that. Daddy. Mm. もえねつら、チャランキ、え、新園。チャランキ、トレーディング、そう、ヘルティー、トレーディング。チャランキ、カラ。チャランキ、え、ドロ。ロ。あに、だなしん、チャランキ、ソブ。え、チャランキ、タ
Nyon to ton ya dan, Nyon ton ya ki tao di la, Ta dame to be shira dan, Shin zin 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 ni sonba de es. Now, if the root cause of all our problems are those two, uh, one is the misperception of how phenomena exist, how the I exists, and the second is self-centeredness, well now, this is for sure. I mean, from a Buddhist point of view, it's definitely, these are definitely the root causes. Now, the question that arises is, what can we do about these? How can we overcome our problems, our sufferings, by weakening these and by overcoming these? Mm. Well, to overcome our misperception mm -hmm. of the self, we have to understand how the self really exists. So, understand what's called selflessness. And secondly, to overcome self-centeredness, we need to develop a mind that cherishes others. Mm. Now, with regard to uh, the, the one root, the one root cause, which is uh, the, the mind that misperceives the self, well, for that mind, we need to understand how the self really exists, how other phenomena really exist, and it is in dependence on the scriptures on what is called the middle way. There are many different scriptures on what's called Madhyamika or middle way that show us, that teach us how phenomena, including the eye, really exist. Mm. Now, with regard to what's called selflessness or no self here, well, we've talked about the fact that it's the misperception of the I that is one of the root causes of all our trouble. Now we need to understand how the self really exists by denying a certain type of self that doesn't exist. So I have to understand what's called selflessness. Mm. Kagiriste, <laughs> Ngai now, when we, when we have this, this mind that holds on to an, unreal, that is an, an unrealistic mind, a misperception of the self, we have to analyze what is the self that it perceives. The mind that is a misperception of reality with regard to the self, it perceives an I, a self, that exists independently, which is impossible. But what we need to analyze is the way our mind perceives of the I. If that I existed, how would it exist? If hypothetically it were to exist, how would it exist? Well, first of all, is the I the body or is it the mind? We talk of my body, my mind, right? Which implies ownership. We instinctively have a sense, oh, this is my body, this is my mind. If the body or the mind 
were the I, why would I say it's my body, my mind? It implies a difference between the owner and that which is owned. So if we, if we were our body, then we wouldn't talk about my body, we would just say I, when we thought of the body. Or if the mind were the I, why would I say my mind? I would talk about I, when I talked about my body, when I talked about my mind. So therefore, that shows there's a difference between body, mind, and the I, right? We must just stress this very much. That which is owned and the owner are different. And instinctively, we say, my body, my mind, implying that there's something separate. That is the I. So there's an owner. There's something that controls mind and body. There's a sense, I'm controlling my body. I'm controlling my mind. So I'm a controller of mind and body, which are that which is controlled. Hmm.
Да, люди, да, и сигмарис. Что? Кесина, люди, цицуне, канти парти, чаше танди, цубати, да, ребе, я, люди, чаше ширабати, мы, зенти, зенти, да, рес, тилаути, рода, люди, да, релона, да, негативмари. Сицуне, канти парти, чаше танди, цубати, да, леша, урсона, тине, чаше чи, мацанба, чана, я. Даме в чагучире, даме в чагучире. Камба меджу, минти не мамбу йоро. So let's look at the body with regard to the eye. First of all, we've had the body is not the eye. But let's say we were to take it to be the eye. Well, what is the body? The body consists of parts that start from the top of our head and go all the way down to the sole of our feet. It consists of so many different parts. So which one is the eye? Which of these parts is the eye? If we say the eye is all of these parts, well, if you lost some of these parts, then your eye would be lost. For instance, some people, I don't know, they lose their feet, for instance, due to an accident. There are some people. So does that mean they have no eye left? Because now part of their body is gone, part of their eye is gone. So does that mean the eye is gone? Because they have to be all these parts to be an eye. They are near us, and they are near us. 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 So, for instance, the, the heart is not the eye, because some people have a heart transplant, and they're still, you know, the, the person is still there. Um, and then what about the brain? Well, there are some living beings that don't have a brain, so that can't be the eye. Usually we have a sense, well, the heart or the, the brain, that's kind of the main part of the body. But even that doesn't make up the eye. That's not the eye. That's not the self. Mm. 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 Yes. And then when we talk about the mind, when we talk about consciousness, well, again, we instinctively have a sense, this is my mind, this is my consciousness. But moreover, Uh, we talk about a person's quality on the basis of their mind, for instance, saying that this is a nice person. So we actually uh, distinguish between the internal of a person and the external. So the external referring to the body and the internal, their mind. So we would say, oh, externally they're attractive, but internally they're really horrible. Or the other way around, you know, like uh, they have a, their internal, like their their internal nature, their their inner nature is really good. It's just the external, right? So we kind of distinguish in Tibetan. Uh, there's that distinction as well. So we do talk about a person being uh, nice or not nice, etc. In depends on their mind. So having a mind, and again, the mind therefore is not the eye. And there are many other reasons why the mind cannot be the eye or the self. Yeah. The Now, when we look at the mind as well, we 
differentiate between the five sense consciousnesses and the mental consciousness. Now, the five sense consciousnesses, the visual consciousness and so forth, they're definitely not the I. All that is left is the mental consciousness. Now, that is a problem because there is the mental consciousness that is awake right now, and then there's the mental consciousness that is asleep. Now, what happens to the eye? They're different. They're different types of mind. So, therefore, does that mean the person disappears when they're asleep? Because that mental consciousness that is awake is not there. If that mental consciousness were the eye, well, when it's not active, then the person is not there, right? And there are other people, not just when they sleep, but, I don't know, faint, or they're in a coma due to some uh, physical ailment, etc. So what happens to them? If the mind that is awake is not there, well, does that mean the person is gone? That means the number of people ディンディンガスンギティミシンギチレシャワイナハモゴエチスウナロトワシヨアルスラワイナユジヨアルスカンデチヨアルスンカルレスンミシセチガスンギティミシギミシバチレシャナアニスウスギスウスミシバチャル
Not every white piece of cloth, not every white shawl can be called a kata. Okay, it's got this silky quality to it. It's made out of this kind of silky material, if you look at it, like silky material. So it's got that aspect. And then certain pictures, like little drawings that are weaved into the, into the fabric, right? If you look at it. Again, does that make a kata? Is that now a kata? Or what about its length? Does it have to be a meter or two? Two feet, three feet, four feet? What about its width? Right? What is it that makes a kata a kata? Right? It appears to exist as if it was in and of itself a kata, but what makes it a kata? Lonjibu so actually, in and of itself, it doesn't exist as a kata. It depends on other factors. It depends on a person, for instance, who uses it as a kata. So traditionally, what Tibetans do when a guest comes, we greet them with a kata like to greet them well as a kind of auspiciousness for their visit. It's just Tibetan, it's a Tibetan culture or Tibetan uh, tradition. It's part of Tibetan culture. And so when you greet them, this auspiciousness, uh, this, this symbolized by the white color, for instance. But in and of itself, this object becomes a kata because you use it that way. You use it in such a way to offer it to a person. So you need a guest there. You need someone to offer it to. You need the person offering it, etc. So you need all, all sorts of other aspects to turn it. It's dependent on other factors to turn it into that which it is. Mm. So without a person, sorry, forgot to say, without a person offering it, without a guest, etc., what, what, how, what would make it a kata? Mm. The Rinpoche just showed you a, a, a pearl of his uh, prayer, of his uh, prayer beads. Mm. So is this a kata? Mm. This, this pearl of his, of his mala or of his, uh, uh, what do you call it? A, a rosary. Uh, whatever. Anyway, so is that a kata? One of those beads? No, it isn't, is it? Yeah, cannot. The di kata di ang aso di nan dos kata yin xia xia sun de chi di gesi gesi de da di chi junju pinzin paru la bu zhu ma pinzin paru la pei jie sun de chi dang ba yin na kun zhu la kata re ge yo ma ro. Kata kata pei jie dong zhe koyu kuang ji zhu kuang ge cha yu ma ro. So for us here. Uh, when we're familiar with this object, for us, it seems it, it's an objective cutter. But if you have a bunch of bunch of uh, ants who kind of do something with it, I mean, for them, it's not a cutter, something totally different. So it depends on certain living beings uh, for it to be this, that, and the other. Dude,地看不着,地看不着。你可以,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,你,
So this morning, Rinpoche gave a review class after His Holiness's uh, teachings, of the, after His Holiness the Dalai Lama's teachings, and Rinpoche used another example. Rinpoche said, there's so many different examples. So this morning, Rinpoche used the example of a house, or a hole, in this case. It's more called a hole in English. But let's take a house, right? If you have a house, a hole, a house... It's only a house in relation to certain living beings. In the sense, if you had a tiny human being, smaller than an ant, then this place here wouldn't be a house. It would be a, a universe. It would be, I don't know, like a huge mountain or whatever. It would not be considered to be a house. And if they're like this big, Rinpoche gave the size, you know, from one finger to the next, yeah, again, it wouldn't really be like what we call a house. If on the other hand, if you have a giant, a giant so tall that the top of his head touches the clouds, that's how Rinpoche described the giant. So that kind of giant, for them, this house would not be a house, it would be a, a toy, a miniature kind of house that is like a toy. So therefore, being a house or not in and of itself, it's not a house because it depends on certain living beings. So Rumshi says, this is how he thinks of this concept. This is how he um, gets an understanding of the concept of, well, what is called emptiness. Emptiness of independent existence, etc. So in that sense, Rumshi says, there's so many different ways of explaining this particular concept. Uh, one of them, this, this important concept of what is the actual nature of phenomena. So there's different ways of thinking about it, but Rimshi says this is the way he thinks about it. So to analyze objects in such a way. But of course, there are a lot more uh, different ways to think about this. Mm. <laughs> So anyway, having talked about the true root causes of suffering, understanding how phenomena actually exist on the basis of this analysis, that is the antidote to grasping at a self, grasping at an unrealistic existence of phenomena. But then we need to uh, also find an uh, find an antidote to our self-centeredness. Well, what is the antidote to self-centeredness? It's the mind that cherishes others. And to understand that better, we're going to look at the text now, the text Rinpoche will teach today, which is called the, the Eight Verses of Mind Training.
Ta a shulga tambu digi Nangada nebe senji tanji ti Jean le duty Ijin ji no wurin bu chin bong chale laure Jo Druller Tungchir tiambu Zambili le druller kasu yen yuwe yin ati tanji le laure Kare le digan la Senji tanji le dene Sinti shini ji tuyen tanji duwe yore Sinji tanji le dene Shia zang Dui da du ji bun zin bu shu us uti sung yore is Nice um, now, the first verse of uh, the eight verses of mind training, it reads, With the wish to achieve the highest aim, which surpasses even the wish-fulfilling gem, I will train myself to at all times cherish every sentient being as supreme. So here, this first verse, what it's saying is that sentient beings are like a wish-fulfilling jewel, a wish-fulfilling gem. In the sense that all our happiness, all our well-being comes from other sentient beings. So all the well-being, all happiness we can actually experience comes from others. And therefore that's why this first uh, verse talks about sentient beings being like such a wish-fulfilling gem. Mm. <laughs> Susurani Ran Chinzi Kumbunashi Ransonre any Rani Chiban Zimbi Kansas Lava in Reku Susurani Rani Chiban Zinki Kansa Chatiro. She's a Rani Chinzi, the Susurani Rani Chinzi Sun Chatri Rani Chiban Zimbi Luti Rani Chiban Zimbi Luti Tu Tunare Dungan Tanji Zawa Tu Ginan Lola Pet Tu Dushi or Sindu say Tu Dushi that the Chatti order. That Yes. The next verse reads, Whenever I interact with others, whenever I interact with others, I will view myself as inferior to all, and I will train myself to hold others superior from the depth of my heart. Now the reason for saying this, the reason being that ordinarily our whole lives, our whole life is controlled by self-centeredness. So our mind of self-centeredness is very much present in all that we do. And remember she says we could even say that we are self-cherishing. We, we become self-cherishing. We are totally defined by our self-centered mind that sees the I in the center of everything. And we consider ourselves to be superior. And now to counteract that in this verse, what, dis, what is described in this verse, is that you apply this antidote by seeing others as superior, as putting others in the center, if you like. Mm. <laughs> Nomotimotatu,nomotiri, then the third verse reads, During all my activities, I will probe my mind, and as soon as an affliction arises, since it endangers myself and others, I will train myself to confront it directly and avert it. Now, what this is saying is that, well, we should always probe our mind. We should always uh, apply self, 
self-awareness or introspection to become aware the moment an affliction such as anger, attachment and so forth arise. And then right away apply an antidote to do something to remove, in the, make a very strong effort in a very um, um, radical way to overcome, that is to, to remove that particular affliction. So this is what is meant here in, in verse number three. So to apply introspection, and as soon as there's a harmful emotion, to go against it, to apply an, antidote, apply an antidote. The reason being that it harms others, it harms ourselves, it harms us now, and it harms us in the future. Therefore, it's important to act uh, based on that understanding. Mm. Ngazi Midigi and then verse number four reads, When I encounter beings of unpleasant character and those oppressed by intense negative karma and suffering, as though finding a treasure, a treasure of precious jewels, I will train myself to cherish them, for they're so rarely found. So what this is saying here is that, well, there are a lot of obnoxious people, people that are difficult, of an unpleasant character, um, that are, yeah, well, just to be, just difficult uh, to be around. And ordinarily we have this sense, oh, that's a really bad person. Oh, if they could just die or just disappear, they're so obnoxious, etc. So we have that thought, well, we were happy if they were gone, basically. Um, and if they get sick, we may even rejoice in that. But that is not the kind of reaction that is appropriate here. We should see them as very precious, giving us the opportunity to train our mind. So they're giving, giving us a great opportunity, um, and they're described like a precious jewel, like a wish-fulfilling jewel, like a precious jewel, because they, can re they remind us on one hand, they remind us of uh, afflictions and karma, their harmful effects, but also in terms of practicing patience. They provide us with the opportunity to practice patience, to practice compassion and kindness. So in that sense, therefore, um, it's said that they give us the, this opportunity from a Dharma point of view, therefore, they give us a precious opportunity to practice certain qualities, mm. positive qualities. Mm. Tindegi, <laughs> 
Yes. Uh, so there are actually two ways of thinking about that. On one hand, if you meet such a difficult person, someone in terms of that character being really difficult, um, experiencing a lot of problems, etc., well, it gives us the opportunity to train our mind, to practice the Dharma, to practice certain qualities that we're still lacking. But you're also helping the other person. If you approach them with kindness, etc., and you, you treat them in a certain way, you may actually influence them in a positive way so that they give up uh, their unpleasant behavior and so forth. Mm. Tanny Yes. And then verse number five reads, When others out of jealousy treat me wrongly with abuse and slander, I will train to take the defeat upon myself and offer the victory to others. Now, this is said to be an antidote to our habitual tendency to always want to win, to always uh, want, the other, want the other person to be defeated and to gain the victory in different situations. And actually, the effect of that action, if in our actions, usually we want to be the one who's, who, who, who wins, who's victorious, etc. I mean, we want to be number one, we want to um, be in a better situation, etc and we don't care about others, well, the result of such an action is the opposite. That when we have this attitude, we actually harm ourselves and reap the defeat ourselves. Therefore, it's important to understand that if we turn it around, if we accept defeat and offer the victory to others, then actually we receive victory and not the defeat. So it's actually the opposite of what we usually expect. We think we benefit ourselves with certain self-centered actions, but in actuality, it's the other way around. And so to practice in such a way, uh, verse 5 is set forth. <laughs> Ma Okunga Says Nimi, 
And then verse number six, it reads, Even if one whom I have helped or in whom I have placed great hope gravely mistreats me in hurtful ways, I will train myself to view him as my sublime teacher. Now, the reason for this verse is that ordinarily when we help someone, we usually expect something back. We want this person to maybe reward us. We may have some hopes in terms of, well, maybe they'll help me in the future uh, or in any other way. We have certain expectations. At the very least, we expect gratitude. But if then instead they harm us in a really hurtful way, as it says here, well, in that case, well, ordinarily we would get angry with them. We would get upset because they, they, they treated us in such a way. But instead, we should see them like a teacher because they teach us about reality. They teach us in the sense, well, first of all, any kind of negative experience we have is a result not just of this person who harms us, but also the result of negative volitional actions we created in the past. Because if we hadn't uh, acted in a certain way, well, these actions, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have that experience. So to also understand that now this negative karma has ripened, it's gone. See it in that way. Secondly, what is also important to understand is that this person is controlled by their afflictions. So to distinguish between the person and these afflictions, to understand their control, they have not much control. If they act in such a hurtful way, there's little control. And to understand the harmful effects of afflictive emotions. And therefore to apply antidotes, to work more on the antidotes to afflictive emotions. Which is why in that sense there are a lot of things to learn as some of the examples Rinpoche just gave, in such a situation. So the person actually benefits us because there's so much we can learn if someone treats us in such a way as a result of all our help towards that person. Hmm. <laughs> Susula Yebe, the Libe Cha Susula Yonjugi Dije, Kari Yeba Inerti, Sinjin Shila, Muda Jube Gune Pa Pu, Sinjinji Dunedi, Muda Jube Gune Tsur, Lenkanto, Ni Lamber Shoes, Lentuber Shoes, Sigi Tisongudo, the Tisan Tondanti. Yes. So then the seven reads in brief. I will train myself to offer benefit and joy to all my mothers, both directly and indirectly, and respectfully take upon myself all the hurts and pains of my mothers or of others. So here what this is uh, saying is that you train yourself in such a way that you take all the suffering of others, uh, all their problems. You, you think that you take all their problems and give them all your benefits, <coughs> all your joy. The San Lutonian D. Lu to Jindu, Jamba Mabaina, Saint Dinit in the Tachi to a young woman at Tandani, be Jala, Jungse Chile, Mabe in the D. Saint Jin La Pa, Tonyachi, Saint Jin Pasu de Gang, Chunjun, you take you in the deep as Siak is Ruchi, then they Chunjuni, Kumajane, John the China, Jimbendi, young to his yore. So this is to train ourselves in a way uh, in which we start in a, in a kind of weaker kind of way to just visualize you're benefiting others and you're taking their problems. It's a little bit like training ourselves to give someone something when they experience a problem. So we start small. We start with giving little things <coughs> to help them in a, in a, in a uh, not very extensive way, but still to relieve their problems to some extent. So we train in such a way. Uh, so in order to train our mi mind to, to familiarize with this idea of benefiting benefiting others, but starting small. Here we just visualize taking their problems and giving them happiness. Mm. Mm. Uh, 
江夏菜哟了，俺做江夏菜为呢，江夏冬茶季，俺送的菜绝呢，没收不到，进不绝那里的，学员也不绝呢。江夏冬茶俺菜的苦了，对的开嘛嘞，过你们就是确实菜下着，苦了。隔来给我嘛的，那是。但是我九月你没见了，东站我才生的生态的，东站几菜的。嗯。现在的，江夏东站我才生的，隔来客户有没生的，没熟熟的，切土嘛都切不了嘛都，再也可能吃你土嘛都要嘛的。听人家讲了。我们香港是江夏那个都是这些叫我，可是江夏可能没好过门多。啊嘞，下下人不菜的嘞。这点这些叫，那是。Um, Rinpoche gave well, Rinpoche gave another explanation saying whether. An action is difficult or not. It's got nothing to do with the action. Whether an action is difficult or not does not depend on the action. It depends on the person. For some people, a certain action can be very easy, and for others, very difficult. Now, Rinpoche again gave an example that some of you may not be familiar with. So I asked Rinpoche, could I explain it to you?、Uh, there's something called full-length full-length prostrations. Full-length prostrations. So it's a, a, a purification practice when people they have like a board in front of them <laughs> and they prostrate themselves all the way to lying flat and then they, you get up right away and you do it again. You repeat this,、uh, reciting prayers, doing certain visualizations. Anyway, for some people, doing this is very effortless. They can do a hundred thousand in one go. They're very strong, physically strong. So they don't. For them, it's very. Effortless to to do these thousands and thousands of prostrations. They do one after the other, and for another person, just doing a thousand, a hundred is extremely difficult. Therefore, doing full-length prostrations is neither difficult nor easy. It depends on the person. Yeah. 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 Yes. Ah, the Jambo men eat it. She now you eat it. Let's change the lana. She can do this lava now. She be change to it. The man change when he change the tortoise. She says the chair game when he share you must. The cancer look to you. The end of the Jambo you make change. Carry in a layer of change. Lose don't you think a layer of change you always. Or to give you another example, some people they jump off planes using a parachute, for instance. Right? It's very easy. It's like a game. It's like a hobby. Like they're up there, they jump out. It's pretty easy. <laughs> Another person, at the mere thought of jumping out of a plane, they faint. So it's all dependent on the person whether parachuting is 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 easy or not. Well, it just depends. Just a Nanjun in Aransu. Kalle Chunjun chile. Di kalle do san shivji di kalle do san san chivu san dan jo amar. Ta di kalle di the mi mangbu chie chese chie tu the kari or kari san kangye le chese lu di jang na ku shu chin jue or. Na se. Oftentimes, when there are little difficulties, when there are little problems, we feel, oh, this is so difficult, or certain situations, it's so difficult. But it's just a matter of attitude. If we think, well, it seems difficult right now, but a lot of people do it, so I can do it myself. Well, that helps us、uh, to have more strength and 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 be able to do it、uh, more effortlessly. Then, did you go to Lujan? Can you see the diary? Yuan Dian Tangji, Sengjian Xingyi Yuan Dian, the part there. 呃，捐糖钱让给捐了出大呀，第六家人去玩的。Yes. There's also another way in which we can train our mind to see all good qualities as the qualities of others, and all negative qualities as our own, as a means to overcome self-centeredness. 嗯，别那，叔叔来园丁去穷不赢呐，说，他那些园丁地了对了冬天去穷不赢呐，叔叔我呢开始听过园丁地了对了冬天。嗯。就穷不赢呐！哎，你对了冬天的叔叔园丁了，对说呢哦，可以一杯园丁了，园丁进的汤团的，可让了南郊也会有张，哎，你热上可让给吃去了怕带去，可让了另外也会有张，可五月内去汤团多少张，可了怕园丁的带去。Yes. To give you an example, if we have positive qualities and another person、uh, praises us for these positive qualities, so instead of、um, reacting with arrogance. Instead, we are focusing on that other person and saying, "Oh, they have positive qualities. They are they are humble. They praise someone else for their qualities. So they've recognized my positive qualities, and they made this effort in pointing it out. So that's something positive. Again, we focus on the other person's good qualities in that situation." Hmm. That, since then, the sister, the wife, the daughter, 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 the da
Or in another situation when another person makes a mistake or an acts in a negative way, so ordinarily we think, oh, they're at fault, they do this wrong, and that is, they have all these negative qualities, etc., and right away point at their, their faults. But instead, if we think, well, I'm failing them. Actually, they're acting in that way, but I don't know how to show them how to be different. I don't know what to tell them, uh, give them advice in such a way that they don't act in such a way. So that's my failure. And in that way, to not just blame the other person, but also uh, look at our own shortcomings. Moreover, when uh, we think about our own knowledge, our own good qualities, what we've achieved, uh, to, to understand that this is independence on others. To also be grateful and think, well, it's because of the teachers I had. It's because of the school I went to. It's because of what my parents taught me, what my classmates taught me, and so forth. So in that sense, to not just uh, think of it as my own qualities and feel full of ourselves, but instead to be grateful and, and understand its independence on so many others. Mm-hmm. And then the eighth, eighth verse, um, it reads, by ensuring that all this remains undefiled from the stains of the eight mundane concerns and by understanding all things as illusions, I will train myself to be free of the bondage of clinging. Uh, so verse number eight, here it speaks of what is called the eight mundane concerns. So these eight mundane concerns, again, in and of themselves, they're not negative. Uh, they become negative in a certain context. So they they harm us. They harm us. They lead for us, or they are responsible for us to be uh, becoming narrow-minded, etc. The jiden chujie say di tire nimba chona gawa majona magawa nimba say di susula nimba suna ngui suna tine chona migi lata suna tine chona gawa ani majona migawa ani tewa chona. Nimba Jona, Gawa, Majon, Nimbus and Susu, the Turatan, Kajan, Nimbushing, Jona Gashi, Nimbushing in the Majon, the Magaisia. And Dana Shingi, hm, Nimba Jona, Miniba, Miniba Tusuna, Magaisia. And Dana Shingi, Turatunki Jona, Gaya, Meratunki Jona, Magaya. And the Rangla, Dewa Jona, Gaya, Madio Johnson, Megaosia, Tindegi sound this word, Tindegi sound the Mandibishin. Now, the eight mundane concerns are being pleased when we gain something, but being unpleased, being not pleased, or being even um, upset when we lose something. That's, those are the first two. And then uh, being pleased when we have a good reputation, but being upset when we don't have a good reputation. Being pleased when we are praised, when someone praises us, but being upset when someone uh, criticizes us. And lastly, being pleased when we have pleasant experiences, but getting upset uh, when we have unpleasant experiences. And here, uh, the point is that we should be more accepting. We should let go of certain expectations, but instead be more accepting of whatever happens. Mm. Tamani 
Tonitubishira now, the last two verses, what they also stress as part of our practice, is to, uh, obs- to look at phenomena in such a way that we see them as like illusions, similar to illusions, in the sense that they don't exist the way they appear to us. They seem to exist in and of themselves, etc., but they don't exist in such a way. So understanding what's called emptiness, or the actual nature, the ultimate nature of phenomena, and to conjoin our practice with this wisdom, with this understanding of reality. Because the understanding of reality is an antidote to all afflictions, to all afflictive emotions equally. Whereas there are other positive states of mind, they can only reduce uh, certain emotions, certain negative emotions. So you have patience and love, compassion. Yes, they help in terms of certain afflictive emotions, but the, afflictive emo- the, the, the antidote to all afflictive emotions is the mind that realizes the ultimate nature of phenomena. Therefore, it's important that we conjoin our practice with this understanding of reality. And in that way, we train ourselves to let go of grasping and clinging at the way of like seeing something as as concretely great and good, etc., and then hold on to it and not uh, without being able to let go. Therefore, it's important with an understanding of emptiness that we train ourselves to let go. The Lujon Sijemingi, Shuluga Tambu Dundigi, Dajin Yangi, Guni Shanju Chuda, Sinji Sudi Sungu Dotunla, Shuluga Tamati. Now, with respect to this, this uh, text, the first seven verses deal with generating what is called the mind of enlightenment, the aspiration to become fully enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings. On the basis of a method to generating this mind that is called equalizing and exchanging self with others. This is what the first seven verses uh, of this text uh, describe. And then the last verse, it describes the mind that realizes the ultimate nature of phenomena, that realizes emptiness or selflessness.
ตัวนี้ตัวเสียรู้จุลจีชานี่แต่ยังนี่ดูสุกงนี่ตัวนี้ตัวเสียรู้งยากี่ยังนี่ที่กุศลยังที่กันละกุศลยังที่สลับวิน
based on the first two, ethical discipline and concentration. Anyway, Rinpoche says, um, time is up now. There's no time really to ask questions because we've gone for a long time. Uh, and with this, we complete today's teachings. Dagi Genius, I will give one date named Andrew upon the Gambian Dutch, where it is in Los Angeles. Then we need to say, Joe Sashi Sanjo 
Thank you so much. Okay, of course. <coughs> I need to purchase it. A photo? No, no. Uh, go ahead. You go. Go ahead. Yes. The Vietnamese group is going to take a photo. Okay, Rinpoche would like to take a picture with everyone together. Maybe we can try to do this? I'm not sure if we can make it, but we'll try. Please come forward. Can we? Kirsty, can we remove this? First together, okay. then, then. <laughs> then easy. Other way, not easy. Big, big tall people in the back? Yes, yes. yes. If you're tall, tall come people. to the back. <laughs> If you're short, go to the front. Thank you so much, everybody. Please, for the introduction course people, we have 45 minutes of tea break. Please enjoy tea in the dining hall. And we come back at 5.30 for the uh, meditation.